welcome back to another episode of Diana's Talk Show. Today, I will be introducing you all to Peter Ratnikov, who is an expert with cryptocurrency. As you may have noticed, I have done few other interviews with Peter, but today we are going to be talking about some fun, cool facts about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So stay tuned and enjoy the episode. Welcome to your crypto life. Here we are with our Peter Ratnikov, who is cryptocurrency expert tell us a little bit about cool facts so everything else i try to be digital and rare paypal is a great example it started to create digital rarity it failed pivoted became paypal which is super successful but it never conquered this digital rarity factor it happens through bitcoin and we applied it to money because what human beings do is when we find something rare we make it valuable so that's actually why people are focusing on the money side of Bitcoin. But the cool facts that you're starting to see now, these NFT projects, which just means digital art, you have decentralized finance, you have people expressing themselves in ways we couldn't imagine online already. And we're in the infancy of this technology. It just started. We're just seeing the basic things that we can do with digital rarity. So thanks to Bitcoin, it was the first one. It was proof of concept. People are going to most likely for the long foreseeable future, if not forever, going to treat it as a form of money and income because it's so rare and it was a proof of concept. But this actual technology is going to bring so much interaction with humans. Like imagine traveling across the world instead of giving someone just your Facebook. Sure, you get their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. But now if you feel like it once a month, once a year, once a week, you could just say, you know what? I had a good day and I had my friend, I know he's having a hard time. Like I talked to him or I seen his post. Let me send him 10 cents, a dollar, whatever. The fact that we have that as an option, it's not about the monetary value. It's the fact that we didn't have that option before as human beings when it comes to interaction. And now that we're interacting in a way digitally that we could actually express financial and unique creativity and we could capsize it so no one else could see if we need to. These are just exciting things that weren't possible on the planet before this technology. What are the cool things that you can buy using Bitcoin? Well, you can buy anything on the planet with Bitcoin. You just have to use a third party. So, for example, there's tons of websites that gift with a Y instead of the I. You go to gift.ca or .com, whatever it is, and you can buy a gift card to pretty much anywhere you could imagine, from Starbucks to Home Depot to Walmart to any major distributor. You could also buy prepaid debit cards. So what you do is you buy a Visa debit card and then you're uploading it with Bitcoin. And there's certain ones you could sell in the moment, there's certain ones you just load the account and as you use it, it spends it live. So people aren't necessarily accepting it directly, but it's if you know how to use it, it's actually more accessible than most currencies on the planet. If I have a prepaid debit card with Bitcoin on it, I could land in any country in the world and any country that takes that visa will work. If I have a Canadian or American Visa card, if I don't call my Visa agency and tell them, hey, or my, my credit card agency and let them know that I'm going to a different country, they might block the transaction, they may stop it. But these prepaid debit Visa cards or MasterCards, whatever the company is, these prepaid credit cards, I should say, are giving you options to spend it wherever you want. And the end person doesn't need to know you're using Bitcoin. But you as a cryptocurrency person, you literally have the option to go pull out fiat currency anywhere locally. You can swipe where they accept it. So it's actually much easier internationally to interact in this currency than any other. So yeah, so using the currency is a matter of how you want to go about it. It's no longer option can I, it's just how, right? And some places are easier than others, but this is, like I said, we're in the infancy. This is still the beginning stages and we already have all these as options. So. Yeah, you might have more and more. Like for example, right now, you would say the American dollar is prevalent everywhere, but if you went to 10 stores in Canada and 10 stores in Europe, they might not want your American dollar. Is the American dollar or is the Canadian dollar, whatever the concept, does it mean it's useless? No, it just means you have to find a way to spend it. So that's the stage we're at with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. It's valuable and you could use it anywhere on anything. The question is, what kind of small hurdle do you have to go through or what small step do you have to take to actually 
have it spent at the location you're looking for. How often do you use your uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency that you have on? Well, guys that got in the space early like me, I've given full Bitcoins to go to conferences, several of them. I've spent Bitcoin on like a website that never worked. I was supposed to have artificial intelligence. And when Bitcoin is a couple hundred dollars, you're not thinking about it as anything. But then you look forward and you're like, man, like the conferences or whatever, I got life experiences out of. But certain things that I spent Bitcoin on, that was way too much in the early days. I'm like, well, maybe I should have just held on to that and used Fiat. So the stage I'm at now is find the best way to go about it is just to still spend what most people find accessible, which would be credit, Visa, debit, cash, right? So I'll just, when I need extra Fiat currency, I'll take a piece of my Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever the case may be, go to my broker, cash out, whatever the number the case may be, and spend the local currency, right? So in that sense, I spend it when I need to, but when it comes to actually making purchases, like to go on my way to want to spend Bitcoin is I like kind of been there, done that, and I'm grateful for it. That's what helped build the community, but that's no longer what's needed from the Bitcoiners to actually make it grow. There's a bunch of other infrastructure layers. There's a bunch of information that needs to be widespread. And if it becomes a global payment network, Bitcoin specifically, whether it be Lightning Network, something else, great. If it's another coin, amazing, right? But I think that there's actually applications much beyond just the money side of this technology. This is just what we're using right now to spread it to the masses, but it could actually do so much more to just spend on day-to-day -day life. You can do that and express yourself socially and in a way that wasn't possible before. That can be timeless. If this digital frontier stays the way it is and we have digital records, we'll be no longer lost in the books there and it will be no longer books that can get burned in history. If we stay on this technological path, this will be something that we could express ourselves and leave a thumbprint or lead our digital identity there forever. Finally, what would you like to tell the viewers in regards to cryptocurrency? Because you are an expert with cryptocurrency. What is the message that you would like to convey? So just use the technology. Don't make an opinion based on what somebody else told you about it. If somebody had a bad experience with a wrong company that might have not did good things with them, those are all stories. But have the first-hand experience, right? Go and actually use the technology, even a few times. And once you use the technology, if it doesn't click and it's not for you, no problem. At least you have an opinion that comes from first-hand experience. And you can do this for a few dollars, a few pennies in some part of the world. Like nobody's saying you need to put a lot of time, a lot of effort or money. But use the technology a few times and experience it. And that way, at least you have an educated opinion. You can have an intellectual conversation why you like or dislike this technology. But for the people that are new, that have watched a little segment like this, that have watched a podcast or a documentary, never used the technology, imagine judging the internet without ever using the internet. Similar example. That was Peter Rechnikov, and I hope you enjoyed the episode. And I'm sure he shared amazing information about cryptocurrency and bitcoin so stay tuned until i see you guys on my next episode with another individual with another expert to share their knowledge and encourage us to come out of our comfort zone and try something new